So throughout this video, you're going to be hearing, um, you know, the sounds of like, like, a, like a loud sound at the background. That's because they are cutting down the trees outside uh, the, my house. So it's going to be a little bit annoying. So I hope you can, you know, uh, soldier through that distraction. All right. I'm sorry about that. So, in the previous video, we were talking about how uh, complex multicellular organisms will need a transport system to minimize the diffusion distance uh, to ensure that the cells inside the body will be able to receive uh, substances such as oxygen, as I'm representing on the left. And the transport system of the multicellular organisms consists of three components where it's the heart, blood vessels and blood. But what I've drawn on the left is just a kind of simplified representation. Okay, so how does this actually, how does the transport system look like in the uh, mammal? The first thing we're going to do is we are actually going to draw out the pump. Okay, and this is the pump and what's the name of the pump again? The name of the pump is referred to as the heart. Okay, and what's the function of the heart? The function of the heart is just to generate pressure so it's able to push the blood to the entire body, okay, wherever it needs to push it to. Now, remember, uh, one of the functions of blood is to carry oxygen. Blood does not just carry oxygen, it carries a lot of other substances, but let's just focus on one function of the blood. Okay. The blood needs to carry oxygen and you know for a fact that the blood is like liquid and it's red in color. Why is it red in color? We will talk about it later. But the point I'm just trying to make is blood takes on the liquid form okay, in our body and for the most part it needs to carry oxygen to the cells. So in this case over here, because the blood is a liquid, it needs to be contained inside a vessel. And the name of the vessel and the vessels are referred to as something called blood vessels. So as you can see here, I'm just drawing out the blood vessel. And what is happening is, I'm just going to draw it out. Okay, now, in reality, the blood vessels, there's not just one blood vessel. There are many different types of blood vessels, by the way. But I'm just giving a simplified version of it. So what the heart will basically do is the heart will pump the blood as I'm just highlighting it in pink. And the blood is now, as you can see, it is moving. Okay, as the heart pumps it, the blood moves. And when the blood moves all the way towards, let's say, an organ or a cell. Okay, it moves to the cell. Let's just basically say a cell in the body like a neuron. Notice that the blood, for the blood to give oxygen to the neuron, the blood cannot just leak out. Okay, this cannot happen. This is wrong. What is supposed to happen is the blood remains inside the blood vessels, but the oxygen inside the blood vessels will diffuse into the cell, into the neuron, for example. And when the neuron actually uh, uses up the oxygen, it produces carbon dioxide through a process known as respiration. The neuron cannot retain the carbon dioxide because too much carbon dioxide is dangerous for the cells. So the cells will give back the waste product to the blood vessel. So what is supposed to happen. The blood is now going to be, I'm going to highlight the blood in a different form where I'm going to color it as a blue color to show you that the blood has a lack of oxygen and the blood needs to be oxygenated again. So what does the body do? The body basically brings the blood back to the heart, but it goes over to the other side. We will talk about the heart having two sides in a different video, but the point is, as the heart keeps beating, the blood just keeps moving. And as it keeps moving, it will then enter the heart. And as it enters the heart, it fills up the heart, and the heart just keeps moving, and it pushes the blood out of the heart. Now, 
when it pushes the blood out of the heart, it has to push it to another organ. All right, which organ will actually make the blood oxygenated again? Okay, because as you can see here, the blood which I've represented in blue is deoxygenated. That means they are not full of oxygen. Okay, they don't have oxygen, and the blood needs to be oxygenated, right? So in this case over here, it will then just basically go to something referred to as the organ called the lungs. More specifically, it will go to a tissue known as the alveolus, okay? But we will talk about alveolus in the later chapter. But what exactly happens in the alveolus? So in the lung alveolus, again, the blood cannot just leak out. The blood has to remain contained inside the blood vessel. But as you breathe, your lung alveolus is now full of oxygen and the oxygen will diffuse into the blood. And the carbon dioxide that was earlier inside the blood will diffuse into the lung alveolus. And this process will actually make the blood oxygenated again. Now, once the blood has become oxygenated, what do you think needs to happen? Based on this diagram, as you can see this here, what needs to happen to this blood vessel? So the blood vessel, so where does this blood go right now? Correct. It will have to return to the heart. It fills up the heart and then it gets pushed out again to other parts of the body. Instead of just putting neuron, I will just basically call this the rest of the body. Except alveoli or gas exchange surfaces. All right? So, it goes to every part of the body, like the brain, the livers, the intestines and all. Uh, the purpose of that is to just give oxygen to the body cells. Pink color is just represented as oxygenated blood. And of course, the blue color over here, I'm going to represent it as deoxygenated blood, as we can see. So, to describe the mammalian circulatory system, the mammalian circulatory system is referred to as something called as a closed double circulatory system. Now, what does it mean as a closed double circulatory system? The first important thing to understand is why is it referred to as closed? The reason why it is closed is because the blood always remains inside the blood vessels. It does not leak out. If that happens, that's called a hemorrhage or an internal bleeding and that's not supposed to happen. Okay, that's not good. So, and then comes the next part, the concept of it being double. Now, why is it called double circulatory system is a bit of an interesting one. Because the blood passes through the heart twice in one complete circulation. So what do I mean by that? As you can just basically trace the movement of blood, it passes through the heart once, goes to the rest of the body, comes back to the heart twice, and then finishes up the loop. I'm going to do that again for you to see. Maybe I'll put it in a different color, okay, maybe in green. So let's say this is the beginning, B. I'm just representing that as the beginning goes to the heart once, out, rest of the body, twice, and then ends over here as one complete circulation. That is why it's called the double circulatory system. Now, the circulatory system also consists of two very important movements. The first important movement, which I've represented in a green color over here, as you can see, like this. This is referred to as something called as the pulmonary circulation. So the pulmonary circulation, which comes from the word palmo, palmo, which is Latin for lungs, which means to say it has something to do with the lungs. All right. So pulmonary circulation just basically means it is the movement of the blood from the heart to alveolus, 
back to the heart. That is the pulmonary circulation. The next one is basically referred to as the one I'm going to be representing it in a purple color. Goes from here, here, and then comes back to the heart. And that is referred to as something called systemic circulation. The systemic circulation is what happens when from the heart it goes to the rest of the body and then it goes back to the heart. So the purpose of pulmonary circulation is basically to make the blood oxygenated. From deoxygenated, it becomes oxygenated. The purpose of systemic circulation is to provide oxygen and other substances to the body cells. That's basically it.